The paradox of volcanoes was that they were symbols of destruction, but also life. Volcanoes can be calm, or they can be voracious. Their raw and real beauty captivates the most curious travelers. Hokkaido, Japan. It's a place where, alongside the volatility, locals coexist in harmony with the volcanoes, feeding off of nature's bountiful blessings. Join me as we learn how the people of Hokkaido live together in harmony with the volcano. From ancient Ainu ways to modern day life, and also sample foods straight from the source along the way. We'll journey through South and Central Hokkaido, following stories from the past to the present of the evolution of this land through repeated eruptions of volcanoes. We'll wind our way through formations Mother Nature has carved, while hiking, biking, and canoeing. We'll meet locals who sow seeds in the land and cook and feast on farm fresh foods they have harvested all from Hokkaido's nutrient-rich land. After calling Hokkaido home for more than 30 years, I've been able to experience so much this land has to offer, and I'm ready to share this off-the-beaten-path region with you. So come on, everybody, let's go. Welcome to Hokkaido, Japan's northernmost island nestled within the Ring of Fire. Far away from the bustling metropolis of Tokyo, this primordial paradise has 31 active volcanoes. That's right, 31. But why call an area with this many volcanoes home? What I've learned from living here is that life doesn't just cope with these mountainous sleeping giants, but life thrives in harmony and has benefited from their presence. Let's have a look at Mount Yote. It's one of the most impressive, the tallest in the region, towering at 1,900 meters. It's so big that no less than five villages blanket its lower levels. Mount Yote is also one of the 100 famous mountains of Japan and located inside Shikotsu Toya National Park. Humans have never been able to stay far away from the mountains and activities like hiking, biking, and skiing that let you experience the majesty of the mountains firsthand. One of the reasons it's famous is because it's easily accessible from the nearby villages. It's a mountain you can even ski in winter. And in the summer, road cycling is all the craze among visitors. Here you can feel the cool mountain air as you cruise by this jaw-dropping backdrop. To see volcano pyrotechnics up and close, let's head to an active volcanic area in southern Hokkaido nicknamed Hell Valley. It's a place where the statue towering above the entrance gives you a hint to what you'll experience inside. The area is classic for what you might think of an active volcanic area, full of sulfuric boiling springs and volcanic steam plumes. This otherworldly feeling place has some great hiking paths too. Follow one of the hiking paths and you'll find Oyunuma Pond, which harkens back to the primordial days. Formed by the volcanic eruptions of nearby towering Mount Hiyori. In the past, Oyunuma Pond was a site where sulfur was extracted to manufacture gunpowder. Further south, Oyunuma Quasi National Park sits alongside the Oshima Peninsula and is home to many other natural treasures as well. Some loud and some peaceful. Inside the park, you can find Mount Komagatake, an active volcano with an uphill hiking trail peaking more than 1,100 meters. Mount Komagatake has shape-shifted time and again over the years. It started as a cone-shaped volcano, similar to Mount Fuji. But because it is still active and erupting, it has evolved over time into a more square-looking volcano.
Lake Onuma, in contrast to the volcano towering above, is a serene, peaceful place to paddle around. When canoeing on Lake Onuma, you'll paddle among the small islands. There are actually over 100 of them. And midsummer, you'll discover plant life, including Junsai, in full bloom. What's more impressive is that some people still use hand-carved canoes to go down the river. This one was carved by our Ainu guide himself. Visitors like yourself can step inside the Nibutani Cultural Museum and see all kinds of things that have been carved by the Ainu, whether for functional use, like a canoe, or even just for decoration. Let's hear from Toru-san, a local carver. で、ルーツっていうと、中心だったんですね。ということは、ま、自然の恵みに生かされている。で、その自然っていうのは魂が宿る神というあの、ま、日本語にすると神様のようなものですね。そういったものが宿っている。だから常に感謝をして、お祈りを捧げながら自然の中
our local Ainu guide is showing us how to light a fire by hand. He'll also perform a ceremony before we begin to learn the other things about this traditional way of life. In the ceremony, the Ainu pray to Kamui. Kamui is a spiritual being that the Ainu worship. This particular ceremony is performed to the fire god, Ape Fuchi, where the Ainu man has asked for permission to enter the forest and also to be kept safe while hunting, gathering, and staying there. By involving travelers in activities like this, it helps pull stories of the past into the future and also preserve the immaculate cultural heritage while having an authentic local experience. In order to survive, one must have shelter. In an Ainu hunter's camp, the shelter is built from what nature provides. The greens on the trees are plucked and large arms of wood pulled to create a teepee-like natural structure. Hunting was essential in the Ainu way of life and they used every part of their kill for clothes, weapons, and of course food. Trapping was one way of capturing food for our Ainu guides family. Hunting was seasonal and you got what the land can provide. The Ezo deer species, which are the local deer of the area, are in abundance here. And that's what our hunter is cooking up for lunch today. The simple ways of the Ainu hunters camp really allow you to appreciate all that nature provides, like the animals that feed off the fertile land blessed by the volcanoes. Stepping out of ancient customs and into modern day, we're going to learn about how the locals coexist with active volcanoes, living right alongside them. It's not often you'll get to visit a living volcano museum like Mount Usu. Not only is there history to see from past eruptions, but the museum's curation of the landscape changes with each eruption, the most recent being in the year 2000. Humans and animals alike are constantly learning how to coexist with the volatility of the volcanoes in this area. えっと、先ほど、もう話しましたが、この事前にお知らせがありました。地球からのお知らせです。それは何かというと地震です。地震が噴火が近いよっていうのを教えてくれました。で、その地震というお知らせに基づいて噴火前に逃げることができたのが2000年の噴火でした。ですが、今後の噴
There's no bigger driving force than a river carving its way down volcanic aftermath. In central Hokkaido, as the headwaters of the Mu River pick up speed, they flow through Akaiwa Seigankyo Gorge. As you raft down the river, you can raft back in time and see all the history as you pass by. Hokkaido was a little bit of 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 赤い岩はその海底の中で何億年もかけて放山中というプランクトンの意外が積み重なってで海底火山の熱と、それからプレートの移動の圧で固められたものが海底火山とプレートの移動で流気してきて持ち上がってきた。Pretty impressive, right? While these minerals make their way to the sea, they also enrich the land along the way, and that creates that nutrient-rich produce. Fun fact, Hakodate Port is the birthplace of Western agriculture in Hokkaido. And Hakodate Port was one of the first trading ports in Japan. Food grown here not only feeds the world, but feeds the locals who call this land home. Hokkaido is well known for its seafood, but rice, kelp, and potatoes are also major food staples harvested. So, first of all, I was doing a lot of things. Fukuri Kun was about 10 years, 15 years ago. And then, everyone was trying to protect the oxygen. Fukuri Kun was trying to protect the oxygen. And then,味が向上して、特へ、ま、下に前に取って、それからま、有名になったという福井粉で。これで福井粉の種も、ま、全土いろんなところに行くんだけども、ま、道南をしたいでやってます。福井粉は、あの、冷めても美味い。冷めても甘
あのうちの町の昆布はもう江戸時代からですね皇室にあの献上されてたあの白口浜間昆布っていう種類の昆布でもう本当にもう世界広いですけど本当にこのうちの町の沿岸でしか取れない昆布なんですね。Little by little. The kelp harvesters in this town are retransforming consciousness into this industry and focusing on the sustainable future of farming. Kombu kelp is known worldwide but stems from the shoreline of this small town. Eating high quality kelp, which is an alkaline food source, is extremely nourishing and helps to keep the body balanced. There are many ways to enjoy it, one being used to make dashi. A Japanese staple used as a base in many soups. Japanese cuisine is based on dashi stock, mainly made from Japanese kelp. Named a UNESCO Intangible Cultural Heritage, the dashi making process is a unique cultural practice to Japan. And it also has umami, the fifth flavor of savoriness. Dashi is the base stock for many soups, like miso, clear broth, and noodle soup. You can take a workshop with a local expert making dashi from Shiro Kuchihama Kombu, which is quite popular in the area. Besides kelp, in your dashi you can also add dried bonito flakes and other local ingredients like dried shiitake mushrooms and small dried fish. Finally, potatoes are the last abundant crop in southern Hokkaido we will explore today. The seeds are sown April to May, and each August through October, harvest happens. まあ、The earth produces such phenomenal beauty, from the landscapes we see to the food that grows from the ground, even more fertile thanks to the volcanoes. From the rice, kelp, and potatoes, these feed people from local Ainu hunters still practicing ancient ways of living off the land, to those living the modern way, cooking and eating at great restaurants. It's grounding to know that the movement beneath the Earth's crust brings forth such a volatile force, yet at the same time produces such blessings. The flow creates the fertile soil and, of course, all this vast beauty. Harmonious coexistence, volcanoes and people. Come to Hokkaido and experience it for yourself.